In this video, we're going to share with you a tour of the Jemison Van de Graaff house here in Tuscaloosa, Alabama. So stay tuned and we'll be right back. So welcome to the Jemison Vandergraaff Engine. Uh, it's Italianate in architecture, uh, which was a stylist type of architecture to uh, do um, at the time. Uh, it's not your stereotypical antebellum Greek revival mansion that you think of when you think of grand southern homes. And so here we have Senator Jemison who built the home, his lovely wife Priscilla Cherokee, and their daughter Cherokee Mims. Uh, and this is the home where they would come and visit on the weekend. So this home remained in the Jemison and Van de Graaff families up until about the 1940s during World War II when it was purchased by the Birchfields. After the Birchfields moved out, it was uh, cut up into a, uh, apartments throughout the home. It was then uh, once again converted into the Tuscaloosa County Public Library, which stayed here until 1979 where the current public library is now housed down on Jack Warner Parkway. Uh, it was then, uh, used as office space for their various businesses. Then in the 1990s, a major historical restoration took place to the restore of the man mansion to the grandeur that you see it in today. All right, so this brings us into the library of the mansion. Uh, and to get you to the Vandergraaff section of the full name, Cherokee, Senator Jemison's daughter, married Colonel Hargrove. Colonel Hargrove and Cherokee had a number of sons and one daughter who married into the Vandergraaff family. So that's how the lane Vandergraaff comes into, into play into the Jemison Vandergraaff mansion. Hop on down a few generations, and then uh, Robert Jemison Vandergraaff was born and raised in this home as well. He grows up to become the father of modern physics, is instrumental in developing the atomic bomb to help uh, end World War II. Uh, there are labs all over the world that are named Vandergraaff in honor of him, even a crater on the moon is named Vandercraft in honor of him. All right, so this was the first home in the state of Alabama to be fully lit by gas lighting. So they had a gas uh, processor uh, located here on the property. So we don't have chandeliers in the home. We have what's called gasoliers. So this would have been Mrs. Jemison's office. Uh, and this is where she would have planned the operation of the entire home for a year, a year at a time, essentially. It's also where she entertained business guests, which would have entered through this door that leads to the front porch. Uh, this door would have led to a private sitting porch. All, right, all of the silver and china and jewelry that we have on display um, was all once owned and used by the Jemisons and the Vandergraaff here in the mansion. Interestingly enough, this china bowl next to the silver pitcher in the center uh, is the bowl of uh, the china pattern that was used the night that the Jemisons were hosting a wedding reception for Croxton and his raiders when they came through Tuscaloosa at the end of the Civil War. It was a nighttime wedding reception. Uh, Croxton comes across from Northport, sees this house lit up with a bunch of people here. He goes, well, I'm gonna go there. Comes down uh, Greensboro Avenue. Uh, Jemison and a couple of other high-ranking Confederates run out the back door, go hide in the swamp. Mayor of Tuscaloosa meets General at the front door, immediately surrenders the city, reminds him that we were actually a Unionist town, voted loyal to stay, uh, voted to stay loyal to the Union, took as best care of the POWs as we could, and oh, by the way, the university is that way. <laughs> so Croxton hops up, back up on his horse, they go down to the university, burn it to the ground, Tuscaloosa is saved and survives the war. Had a close one there. All right, so this room is interesting for a couple of reasons. Uh, it's a great uh, room to show off the wonderful windows that go along the entire front level of uh, the front of the house around the porch. Uh, you'll notice that they're very tall. That helps with the ventilation during the summertime, and it also gives you easy access uh, onto the front porch. All right, so this would have been Senator Jemison's office, but same setup as Mrs. Jemison's office. A door for business associates to enter through. Front door would have been reserved for formal guests. We have a side door on this side of the building that would have been reserved for friends to come in to visit. So we refer to this now as the Vandergraaff bedroom uh, because bed, 
wardrobe and chest of drawers were all here when the Vandegrass were here in the home. All right, so originally it would have been a uh, four bedroom home. During uh, the Birchfield years, uh, they took out a wall here and they would have had a doorway where you're standing exactly like the doorway there and this wall would have been here. So they took out that wall on both sides, added a modern bathroom into the home uh, in the 1940s. Uh, so you would have had bedroom, bedroom, changing room, exactly the same on the other side of the house. Yes, this last staircase leads up to the cupola at the top of the home, which was the second half of the air conditioning system. So you open up the windows downstairs, come all the way up to the top, open up uh, the cupola, uh, and you can just feel the air rushing out of the house. So it pulls all the hot air up and out and through the house, and it can literally drop 10 to 15 degrees on the first floor of the home as soon as that opens up. All right, so this is the first fully functional bathroom in the state of Alabama. Is that copper? Yes, it is. And it's amazing that it survived everything that's gone on and all the different changes mm -hmm. in this house. Uh, so this is the first house you can come and take a hot bath on demand. We say hot, but probably a lukewarm bath on demand. Um, and the first place where you had a fully functional indoor toilet as mm -hmm. well, which would have gone in this closet. That's the doorbell. Yes, that's the original <laughs> doorbell. That's cool. Does it work? It does. There's a little chain on the outside. You can... yeah. Well, I saw it, but I didn't push it. But... <laughs> I forget that it's there. <laughs> uh, so these are all Vandergraaff boys. We have uh, William Vandergraaff here in the center, Senator Jimison uh, down here on the left. Uh, they all played on the uh, University of Alabama's football team, the first one to go to the Rose Bowl. See, everything in Tuscaloosa goes back to football. Yes, so this is our quaint little dining room. It is built off the back of the house for a couple of reasons. One, it got good ventilation. It has a floor, uh, ceiling to, almost ceiling to floor windows on this side. Uh, we'll refer to as half windows on the opposite side. So you can get a good cross breeze through here to help you keep you cool in the summertime. And it got really good light both morning and evening as, as well in the direction that it's facing. Uh, the, Portrait above the piano is of Mrs. Birchfield. They're the ones that bought the house from the Vandegraaffs during World War II. Yeah. With a paintbrush. Wow. What is What's the, the, the YC? Stands for Yancey Claiborne. Oh. It's a fictitious name that we came to make up because it was donated from the Yacht Club. Oh, <laughs> Yacht Club, get it. So. Mm -hmm. right. uh, in the middle uh, on back is the Butler's Pantry. We also had a silver pantry over here. In the back was what's called the finishing kitchen. So typically houses of this grandeur had their kitchens disconnected from the house. So if the kitchen caught on fire, you lost the kitchen and not the house. So since this is only a weekend townhome and it's mainly brick and concrete in the construction, they said, well, we'll put the kitchen downstairs in the basement. So there's a small flight of stairs and a dumbwaiter to move food up into the finishing kitchen where you would finish plating the food before you mm -hmm. brought it out to be served to the Jimisons and their guests. Wow. Hence, a finishing kitchen. Yep, that makes sense. So another one of the unique aspects about this home is the conservatory, which we're now in. Basically, it was a giant greenhouse for Mrs. Jimison to keep tropical plants in. Uh, not only were they beautiful to look at, but they helped with the smell of the home as well. Obviously, we're Tuscaloosa County Preservation Society. Uh, last year, we were unable to have events, but we typically do, our structures are open Tuesday through Saturday. Uh, Old Tavern at 1.30, Battle Freeman at 2.30, Jemison Mansion at 3.30 for guided tours. Uh, the Murphy Collins House, which houses the African American Museum, is open Monday through Friday from 10.30 to... And we also have uh, a Heritage 5K in the fall and an annual Easter egg hunt, typically Palm Sunday-ish. Uh, well, we don't just do weddings, we can do all kinds of events. We had a Harry Potter themed birthday party in the Old Tavern, which was perfect. It was perfect. 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 It was absolutely So yeah, if you can think of it, we can help you figure it out and make a space and figure it out. I forgot to mention our tours are free. We do yes. happily take donations and you can go to historictuscaloosa.org to get all the information you could ever want.
And I appreciate you taking this on. I know you probably don't hear that enough. I appreciate it. No, it's, an, it's, it's still, it's a piece of my family history that is, I don't know, I can't say enough. Thank you very much. Thank you so much I for do your appreciate time. It. What was your name again? My name is Will Hawkins. Will? Okay.